This is the great mystery of the prophecy of Isaiah. The servant who suffers and the king who reigns are one and the same, but he must first come as the servant before he can come as the king. And the reason for that is very simple, because the Jews are their own worst enemies. They think they need to be saved from their enemies around them. They actually need to be saved from the enemy within. It's so easy to assume your troubles are due to others, but in fact the real problem was their own sin. And this explains a whole lot in the Gospel story. You see, when John the Baptist announced, prepare the way of the Lord, repent, the kingdom's at hand, it's very near, get ready, get in that river and get cleaned up, confess your sins, get baptized. What is he saying? He's saying, you think you're ready for the king, you're not. You're sinful subjects. You're not clean enough to live in the kingdom. The same thing when Jesus came, he said, repent and believe for the kingdom is at hand. Now this explains Palm Sunday very well indeed. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem at last. He was doing what the people wanted. He was coming in as king and the crowds went wild with excitement. They really thought he was the king. And this comes out in everything they shouted. They were shouting, Hoshana, Hoshana, Hoshana. And that is not a kind of heavenly hello. That's what it's become in choruses today, sing Hosanna. Hoshana means liberate us now, set us free now. And he rode up. They didn't notice he was riding on a donkey. See, the second time he comes, he'll ride on a horse. And that's very different. But he was riding on a donkey, he was saying, I haven't come to fight. You ride a horse when you fight. When he comes the second time, Jesus will fight. He comes as a man of war on a horse, a white horse. But he came on a donkey that time. They didn't notice the donkey and they, they threw their coats down, they waved palm branches and they shouted, Son of David, Son of David. They really thought he was coming to fulfill the first part of Isaiah. And then he came through the gate and he turned left instead of right. And the crowd went silent. And he saw a man with a whip and said, give me that whip. They thought, is he going to do it? But no, he turned left instead of right. Now you've got to go to Jerusalem to understand the significance of that. On the right was the Roman fortress Antonio, where the Roman occupying forces were. Instead, Jesus turned left into the temple and whipped Jews. Now you can imagine why a few days later the same crowd said crucify him and why they chose Jesus Barabbas instead. A guerrilla fighter called Jesus Barabbas, which means Saviour, Son of the Father. But he was a guerrilla fighter. They said, that's the kind of man we want, a man who's going to fight. But a man who whips Jews out of the temple, uh-uh. Can you see the crisis? They thought he was coming to take the throne and all he did was clean up the temple. How very disappointing. So that when Pilate put the plaque above the head as of the dying criminal, this is the king of the Jews, they couldn't believe it. Only one man in that whole nation believed it. And he said, Lord, remember me when you get your kingdom. He saw in the suffering, dying man, the coming king. He was the only one who did. That dying thief, thief has earned a place in history because he was the only one who believed it. Do you see how Isaiah saw it all and yet didn't realise what he saw and couldn't put it together? We can put it together now. We know that one day he will come on a horse and take over the governments of the world and reign here. He's going to be the King of England and the King of America and China and Russia. Jesus is going to reign and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. You can whisper hallelujah if you like. <laughs> I mean, that's great news. But he had to come first because nobody was really ready to live under his government. You can have a perfect king, but if he doesn't have good subjects, there can't be a kingdom. The Jews in their pride thought they were all ready for the king to come and liberate them and reign. 
And the message of John the Baptist says, you're not ready, you need to be cleaned up. And actually what we're doing now is getting people ready for the King to come and reign. We're preparing subjects all over the world, of all nations now, so that he can come back and when the good news is preached to all the nations, then shall the end come because God wants all ethnic groups represented. And that is why the ultimate future in the second part of Isaiah combines the national with the international. The, it, it seems if he's constantly switching in the last chapters from the future of Jerusalem to the future of the nations. Jerusalem, nations, Jerusalem, nations. And this, of course, is the wonderful passage which uh, was you find in Isaiah 4 about in the latter days the mountain of the house the Lord will be established, the house the Lord will be established on the mountains and all the nations will come.